Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on creating and interpreting scatter plots using Microsoft Excel. So I have here some fictitious data which could be related to counseling research. Uh, we have one variable here, ID. We have 20 uh, participants. Then we have another variable, GPA. Right, let's say this is undergraduate GPA. And let's assume that this data is collected when an individual applies to a master's program. So a graduate, graduate level program, their undergraduate GPA is collected. At the same time, uh, there's a knowledge test, like counseling knowledge test that's given, an aptitude test, so more like a skills test, and then later on down the line uh, when that applicant becomes a student and then eventually a graduate, a uh, comprehensive exam, a final exam is given, those scores are gathered. And the last variable I have here, these are just random numbers I generated using the rand between function in Excel. And I generated them using a low value of 20 because that's the minimum value on the knowledge test is 20 and a maximum of 61. Uh, generate them for the purposes of demonstrating how a scatter plot might look using random numbers as opposed to values that we would expect to be strongly positively correlated with a value with a variable like GPA. So let's create our first scatter plot. Let's say we want to understand the relationship between GPA and the knowledge test. So I'm going to highlight, I'm going to select this entire region and go to insert and you can see there's an option for scatter and then an option for scatter with only markers. You can see we have a scatter plot that there does seem to be a line developing there and let me make this a little more visible. So without having any numerical or statistical information about these variables, you can see that there does appear to be a line. And I'm going to make this a little more interpretable by setting the uh, minimum value for the GPA at 1.5. Because right? I know we don't have any GPAs in this variable that are lower than that. So now a little bit cleaner. And we know that this is the knowledge test, so I'm just going to delete that to make this a little bit larger. So we can see on the x-axis we have the GPA scores, right, uh, 1.5 to 4. And then on the y-axis we have the knowledge test scores. So if you look at the chart layouts up top, uh, you can select this one, layout 9, right, which will give you the uh, line, the best fit line here based on least squares method. The equation for the line, so you have a slope of uh, around 20.4 and an intercept of uh, negative 16.88. And of course we have the coefficient of determination, otherwise known as r squared, which is 0.85, which we would interpret as 85%. So 85% of the variance in the knowledge test can be attributed to GPA. And 85% of the variance in GPA can, attribute, can be attributed to the knowledge test. So it's not about causality, it's about shared variance. So we can see that with these two variables, if we only had the GPA and we want to predict a value on a knowledge test, like if we're given you know, a 21st GPA, we have 20 of them, we're given a 21st value, uh, this line, this, this high coefficient determination, and the way this line is situated, uh, we could predict that with some level of certainty, right? because it's a fairly high coefficient determination, 85%. So let's make this area a little bit larger and kind of move this scatter plot to the side. And 
take a look at the main view here again with the data. Now let's take a look at GPA and the aptitude test. So again, we'll insert the scatter plot. I'll make this uh, green. And you can see the relationship clearly uh, does not appear to be as strong, but let's take a look at the actual values here. So you can see now there's uh, a coefficient of determination of 49%. So still there is a relationship there which indicates you could predict the aptitude test from the GPA, uh, but not nearly as strong as the 85% we saw over here. So again, to make this a little easier to interpret, we want to find the minimum value for the y-axis, in this case, the aptitude test. And I happen to know that it's 75. It's this value here. Uh, you could find out using the min function in Excel. So we can go to this axis and we can set, we can format the axis and make a fixed value minimum of let's say 74. And we can do the same thing with the GPA, except uh, when we format the axis, we'll use the fixed GPA of 1.5 as the minimum. So this makes it a little easier to understand what's going on. There, there is of course the line and it does predict you, know, you from from the GPA you could predict the aptitude test fairly well so then how well does the GPA predict the final exam which of course would would be what we would really want to know uh, in this example because the GPA is given at the beginning when the student starts a program and the final exam is given at the end so Insert, scatter. Again, a little bit difficult to interpret without changing some of the values here. Uh, but you can see there does appear to be a strong relationship. So I'm going to switch the view so we can have uh, a look at the coefficient of termination. We can see it's 67%, almost 70% there. And there does appear to be a strong relationship, positive relationship between GPA and the final exam scores. So for all three of these examples I provide so far, you can see that there is a positive relationship between the GPA and the three variables. So let's take a look. I'm going to delete these, these other graphs. And let's take a look what happens when we use random numbers. So we'll take GPA and the set of random numbers that have the same, that were set to have the same minimum and maximum as the knowledge test. Although because they were random, uh, you know, we're not guaranteed to have the same minimum and maximum. And in fact, we don't for this particular set of random numbers. So let's insert a scatter plot to show the relationship between these two variables. And again, I'll change the formatting to make this a little more visible. We'll go with green. And for this scatter plot, I'm going to format the, axis, the axes again, just to make it a little more interpretable. So again, the minimum for the GPA 1.5 and for the random number I know there's no value below 20 so I'll put the minimum as 20 so now even before putting a line through here a line of best fit using the least squares method you can see there doesn't seem to be much of a pattern in this relationship between GPA and these random numbers. Let's go ahead and put the line in. And I'll delete some of this other information that makes the graph smaller here. 
So you can see that the line is has a negative slope, a slight negative slope. But look at the R squared here. It's less than a percent. It's 0.49 percent. That's very low shared variance between these two variables. So we would say that between GPA and the random variable, there's really no relationship. So this is what a scatter plot looks like when you have no relationship between two variables. So trying to use GPA to predict the random variable, uh, it, it wouldn't be very helpful, right? There's, there's really essentially no relationship here, and there's no predictive power in this relationship. So for any given GPA, we really have no idea uh, what the random variable is going to look like, which is very different than what we saw with the knowledge test, the aptitude test, and the final exam. So there's one last feature I want to show you regarding creating scatter plots, and that's that we can use more than two variables. So all the examples I've used here have had two variables, but you can actually use as many as you want. So I'm going to load, well, I'll load all of them here. All right, so GPA, knowledge test, aptitude test, final exam, and random. So as you can see, there's a lot going on in this particular scatter plot. So I'm going to I'm going to make this as large as I can. And again, I'm going to format that axis that x-axis to give us more usable space on the graph. So when you're trying to interpret multiple variables on a scatter plot like this, I think it helps to change the colors. That would right click and format data series and then for marker fill I'm just going to change these colors. So I'm going to make random uh, orange, just make it stand out a little more. And then for knowledge test, do the same thing and marker fill. I'll change this one to blue. And we can see the final exam had a red label before. So final exam of the triangle, so I'll change that to red. So still a lot going on, but it's a little easier to see now the different patterns. And if you focus just on one of the series at a time, you can see the relationship there between GPA and aptitude, the aptitude test and the knowledge test, and of course the final exam, and you can see the random, the points are kind of scattered all over. Now, it would make this really complex, but you can also put the lines on. Uh, and you can actually read them. There's, a, again, a lot going on in this particular scatter plot. But you can still actually see the relationships between GPA and these four variables. And that's one of the characteristics of a scatter plot in Excel that I want to make sure you understand is that even though I've run five variables, when I created the scatter plot, the x-axis is still GPA. It's the first one. So this is GPA and then everything else. So these four lines represent the knowledge test, aptitude test, final exam, and the random variable. I hope you found this video on creating and interpreting scatter plots in Microsoft Excel to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me, and I'll be happy to assist you.